Support for another round comes from Squarespace. Start building your own website today at squarespace.com. Enter offer code another round at checkout and get 10% off. What, what? <laughs> Squarespace. Build it beautiful. Hi, I'm Heaven. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Heaven. I'm Tracy. And welcome to another round with Heaven and Tracy. Woo! So, this is the Kwanzaa Show. I'm so excited for everybody to hear the Kwanzaa Show. So excited. This is a condensed and edited version of our Kwanzaa Spectacular, but it was recorded on two nights. Mm -hmm. And it was at the Jerome L. Green Space and the Bell House. So you're getting a little best of both worlds. Like, for a second, can we pause and reflect on how amazing and slightly insane Eleanor is for com doing all the work also of combining that. both shows? Yeah. So you're getting the best parts of both shows. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> Email Eleanor and thank her. Just be like, right now. You have as many hours in the day as Eleanor Kagan. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. None at all. So you can see a video of the entire Green Space show, plus a video we made of the actual Sandra Lee Kwanzaa cake. Yeah, we made the cake. We made the cake. And we tasted the cake. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but you can see all of this at buzzfeed.com slash another round on our Facebook page and on Twitter at another round. Happy Kwanzaa, y'all. Yes, and may all your Ujamas and Ujimas be plentiful <laughs> in the coming year. <laughs> All right, we hope you enjoy the show. Woo. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Heaven. I'm Tracy. And welcome to our Kwanzaa Spectacular live from New York. The drinking part of the show is real. People always ask us about this. <laughs> we so would not lie we, to you. we just brought out Sandra Lee's Kwanzaa cake, which is a real thing that Sandra Lee made on the Food Network where she has a show still. Still, she still, still has a job after that. And why did we do this, Tracy? Because we don't value ourselves, I don't know. <laughs> well, we made it and we ate it. So we had to show someone else. Somebody needs to see it. <laughs> yes. Um, we have some very special guests. We have some Ooh, show coming? favorites. There is Ooh. a Jean Dimby in the audience. Yes! Oh my gosh. Um, we also have a Miss Jean Grey in the audience. Hey! Um, I was gonna steal this joke and pretend like I invented it, but I'm a bad actress. But somebody said earlier that there is a pair of jeans. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. Also, speaking of jokes, we're gonna bring back Tracy's joke time. Yes, yes, yes. Um, also, some Stacy's career corner. The one and only, and oh, Jasmine Hughes is here. She's adorable. She's adorable. Hey, Jazz. Hey, girl. Um, oh, also, we have a very, very special celebrity guest that we're very excited to present to you. Ooh, yeah. Suspense, suspense. But before we get started, <laughs> it has come to our attention that uh, not everyone knows about Kwanzaa. Um, hi, white people. Nice to see you. Um, also, a lot of brown people, I see. Yeah, say. yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I just learned about Kwanzaa yesterday, so. I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Don't pull my black card. Um, <laughs> but we did want to start off with a brief explanation of what Kwanzaa is for those who may not know, and there's no shame in not knowing. And to do that, we want to welcome our very good friend, lead blogger at NPR's Code Switch, one of my very best friends of the past decade, Mr. Gene Dimby. Habari Ghani and host to you all. <laughs> Tell us a little, about, a little bit about how you feel about Kwanzaa. What does Kwanzaa mean to you well, as an Asiatic black man? <laughs> as, a, as an Asiatic black man. So a lot of people, a lot of cynics will tell you that Kwanzaa was created uh, by uh, Big Kente to make a lot of money. Right, right, right. The Kente lobby, of course. But to me, Kwanzaa is a respite from all the things we have to deal with as black people in America, like structural inequality and mm -hmm. lactose intolerance. Right. <laughs> and right. whatever the right, fuck right, Raven Simone is talking Absolutely. about on Twitter. So. <laughs> you're right, you're right. So. You better teach the children. You better teach the children. So do you one celebrate time. Kwanzaa? Uh, I do not. Okay. <laughs> all right, Jean. Jean Dunby, everyone. Jean Dunby. So first, some real information about Kwanzaa. It was founded in the 60s by a well-intentioned, well-intentioned yet 
questionable man questionable. named Dr. Questionable. Karinga. We won't talk about the man. You we'll can, just talk about Kwanzaa. You can Google him on your own time. Please do. <laughs> Kwanzaa is celebrated the day after Christmas. It starts the day after Christmas on the 26th, and it runs through January 1st. And it was begun, it was began, <laughs> begun? I'm country, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was started to combat the commercialism of Christmas and also just to give black folks a holiday. Mm-hmm. White folk got like Boxing Day. What even is that? <laughs> why we can't have a holiday? So that's not quite why it started, but yes. I mean, you know, that's why like, I you know, feel like it the started. The '60s Pan Africanism, blah blah blah. They right. were, you know, they were feeling the spirit. I'm pretty sure it's of what the I Kente cloth. <laughs> <laughs> so the staples of Kwanzaa are seven: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven principles. Just the candles. Um, just count the candles. Seven, so we've been calling this the Kwanzaa Menorah. <laughs> <laughs> the actual name is Kanara. Kanara, everyone. <laughs> We're that all we, learning. We still choose to call it a Kwanzaa Menorah because it's funny. I don't know. So what are the seven Kwanzaa principles, Tracy? I'm so glad you asked, Kevin. <laughs> the seven Kwanzaa principles are as follows. Umoja, which means unity. Kuji Chagulia, which is re- really fun to say and means self-determination. Ujima, which means collective work and responsibility. Ujama, which sounds like if you had twin babies, you named one Ujima, you named the other one. <laughs> Ujama means cooperative economics. Nia means purpose. Shout out to Nia Long. Um, Kumba means creativity. And Imani, I feel like everybody knows a girl named Nia Imani. Nia. Her name means faith. <laughs> So those are the seven base principles of Kwanzaa, basic, but what basic. you <laughs> what you may not know is that there's like a ton of other Kwanzaa principles that don't get as much shine, and that is where our Kwanzaa historian, Mr. Gene Demby, comes in. Yes. Every year, he takes on the tireless task of educating via Twitter and letting us know of all the forgotten Kwanzaa principles out there. So Gene, we would love for you to walk us through seven of those principles. But first, to help us inform you, we would like to welcome our one woman house band, the incredible, the amazing Miss Jean Gray. More like Jean Bay, am I right? I wrote that by myself. Yes, with the body roll, yes. So if you listen to the podcast, which I hope you do, you will remember an episode where Ms. Jean Grace sang some casual Negro spirituals yes. as I talked about the sad state of my love life. Made it a little more bearable. So today she is here to help us with some casual Kwanzaa spirituals right. as we inform you of all the forgotten Kwanzaa principles. Exactly. Excited. Very excited. Me too. Jean, you are African, which people may or may not know. Like, actually from no. Africa. <laughs> no, no. So, um, do... She's South African, everyone. Yes. Nice. Do you celebrate Kwanzaa? Hey, shout out. Hey, shout out to the one. <laughs> shout out to the one. <laughs> That's what we do when we see each other in the street. <laughs> it's really weird in, like, coffee shops and stuff. Right, right. <laughs> Just, just to let people know. Uh, no, we have no idea what Kwanzaa is in Africa. So, oh, yeah. okay. Nice. Um, <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> Do you celebrate it here in New York ever? Uh, I celebrate drinking, so any holiday that has anything to do with drinking, like okay. if that's one of the principles of Kwanzaa, fuck yeah! Yeah, yes. okay. Awesome. Awesome. We should make drinking a principle of Kwanzaa. It is. <laughs> we'll think about it's, that. It's the ninth. <laughs> the ninth principle. Are we ready for the forgotten principles? Are I think we are. Ready? All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm going to need you to repeat them along with me, okay? Yes. All right. Here we go. Our first forgotten Kwanzaa principle. <laughs> Emoji. <laughs> Emoji is when we hand clap sign for the ancestors for their sacrifices, and mm. thumbs down sign, mm. the haters who ain't dookie sign. Mm. <laughs> haters. Everyone, everyone, please say it with us. Emoji. 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 Ashe. 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 Sorry, I'm getting into it. Sure. <laughs> it's powerful. It's my favorite one. <laughs> Our second forgotten Kwanzaa principle. Is Boosie. Boosie, Boosie yeah, yeah, is a traditional yeah, yeah. request, usually shouted 
to be wiped down by one's peers. Wipe me down. Everyone, everyone, Wipe in unison. Me down. Boozy. Shoulders, chest, pants, shoes, habarigani. Pose. Our third forgotten quanta principle is Kuji Chagalia. That is a celebration of Africa's diversity by wearing sweaters with thousands upon thousands of colors in them. Everyone? Everyone. Kuji Chagalia. Biggie had a lot of Kuji sweaters. Biggie loved Kwanzaa. He did the true story. <laughs> <laughs> Our fourth often neglected Kwanzaa principle is Mufasa. My personal Mufasa. favorite. That is to selflessly sacrifice one's life for one's child who is on some real bullshit. Yes. Yes. I shame. Shame. Mm -mm -mm. Hold me over, Cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Mufasa. Our fifth forgotten Kwanzaa principle is Uzo Aduba. That's, that's fan service. That's fan service. Right it's a principle that means unrequited love. And we celebrate this by peeing on the floor of the one who won't have us. Haven't we all been there? Everyone. Uzo Aduba. Got those crazy eyes. <laughs> Our sixth forgotten Kwanzaa principle is Oh No Poor Dookie. It is a quiet, tearful refrain uttered at the end of an episode of The Wire. <laughs> Especially season four. Especially season four. Season four shit. <laughs> Everyone. Oh, oh no, no. Poor, poor Dookie. <laughs> poor Dookie. All right, our seventh and final forgotten Kwanzaa principle. This is the most important one, everyone. Mm. This is Annie Ajuwoki. <laughs> This is the practice of being hit by, of being struck by, a smooth criminal. Everyone. And is you okay? And is you okay? Is you okay? Is you okay? Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Gene. I feel so informed. And is you okay? Is you okay? And it wasn't okay. And it wasn't okay. She uh, was always uh. a white orphan that was weird. <laughs> mm. 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 Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Habari Ghani and Hotep to you all. Everybody, Jean, 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 So for our next segment, we're gonna bring back a guest that. Hello, 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 hello. Can I, uh, can I see your wrists, please? Uh, what, so Tracy? There's no watch that I see, so oh you clearly God. don't know what time it is. <laughs> what time is it, Tracy? Can anybody guess what time it is? Oh How God. did you know? How did you know? Hey, everybody. Hey, how you doing? Thanks. Thanks for coming to Club Comedy Club Tracy tonight. Oh. What is the deal with Wanda? <laughs> 
the one impression that I do and it's not good. Okay. Um, I have a joke for everyone. Christmas time, right? Christmas Eve and there's a guy named Jerome. And he's out, he's trying to find a gift for his wife. He wants something really unique, something really incredible, something that no one has ever seen before, right? And uh, <laughs> so he wanders into a pet store and he's talking to the guy, he's like, yeah, I'm looking for like some, like a really weird, really innovative gift for my wife. I want something that nobody's ever seen before. And the guy's like, you know what? I have a parrot for you. He's like, a parrot? He's like, yeah, this is a really, really, really special parrot. Anybody wanna guess what the parrot's name is? <laughs> no, it's Chet. <laughs> So he's like, Chet is an amazing parrot. He sings, and he sings Christmas carols. And Jerome's like, what? And he's like, I know, right? He sings. He just does it by himself. I didn't teach him. He's just filled with the spirit of Christmas. So Jerome's like, I need to see this parrot because I don't believe you. So the guy goes and he gets the parrot. He goes to get Chet. He brings Chet out, and he sits Chet on the counter, and nothing happens. And Jerome's like, I thought you said this parrot could sing. He's like, oh, we can. Give me one second. So. <laughs> The pet store. We, we can get through this as a family. We can do this, we can do this. So the pet store owner goes and he gets a lighter. He comes back, he picks up Chet the parrot and he holds an open flame over his left foot. I know, right? Crazy. Jerome couldn't believe it either. And uh, Chet the parrot starts to sing Jingle Bells. And he's like, oh. Right, he was surprised too. He was like, oh, that's pretty cool. He was like, that's nothing, check this out. He holds a flame over his, under his right foot and he starts to sing, let it snow. He's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I'll take it. I will take Chet the parrot home with me. He gives him like $40. I don't know how much parrots run for these days. <laughs> Singing parrots, I don't know. Inflation is a long time ago, who knows. Takes the parrot home to his wife, whose name is Bobby Joe. Uh, Y'all are so cute. I just can't handle it. Oh my God. And so <laughs> Jerome's like, hey, baby, Merry Christmas. I got you a singing parrot who sings Christmas carols. And he presents her with Chet the parrot. She's like, this bird's not singing. Why do you always do this? Every year you buy me a dumb ass gift. He's like, can, for once, can we have a nice Christmas? So that it was this whole big thing. And then he's like, no, this is how you get the parrot to sing. So he takes the lighter, holds the flame under his left foot starts to sing Jingle bell. Bells, oh my gosh. I'm trying to keep the country down a little bit, but it was just like, he starts to sing Jingle Bells. I don't know. So she's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Then he holds the flame under the bird's right foot, starts to sing Let It Slow. Snow, <laughs> I'm not this drunk, I promise. And she's like, oh wow, that's really, really neat. Let me try. And so as she's trying to hold the flame under one of Chet's feet, she misses and she holds it like right between his little parrot legs, right? And Jerome is like, no, 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 be careful, be careful. And <laughs> instead of how a chirping out in pain, Chet starts to sing. <laughs> he starts to sing Chet's nuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what up, y'all? All right, so this is the moment where Stacey Marie changes all of our lives, as she has been doing. If you are for some reason unfamiliar with Stacey Marie Ishmael, first of all, how dare you? Yes, how Second dare you? Second of all, she embodies every principle of Kwanzaa, as you can see, as yes. she effortlessly glides here on the spirit of the ancestors, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to Miss Stacy Marie Ishmael, aka Caribbean Vibes. <laughs> yes, Air Horns. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the. <laughs> so aggressive with their. <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. <laughs> you look radiant per usual. Thank you. Thank Are you, you ready to fix everything that's wrong with everybody in the room? I mean... No pressure. I'm, I'm not certified. Ah, oh, nah. <laughs> certified. Try. Certified. <laughs> All right. So these are questions that we pulled from our audience, aka you, and we're going to fix some lives. She's going to fix I'm not fixing nothing. She's going to fix some lives. <laughs> okay. So one of the questions is, how do you handle being authoritative without seeming, quote unquote, scary? Whatever. Whatever. Ooh. 
I hear you, ma'am. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I'm going to let Stacey take it away, though. <laughs> yeah, this is the how do I assert my authority without basically being a bitch. Mm. So here's the thing. People are going to think you're a bitch anyway. Go off, Stacey. Go <laughs> off. Go <laughs> off. <laughs> That was important. Can we, yeah. once more? Regardless, especially if you're a woman in authority, and if you are not a white woman in authority, it, there's even more layers of this. Nope, you are not friends with the people who have to take instructions from you, mm. no matter how much you or they w- might want that to be so. Mm. Because as soon as you can fire somebody, you can fire them. <laughs> and Hello. so a lot, of, a lot of this comes from a place of wanting to be liked by people that you have to manage or people that you have to lead. And not to be all like Machiavelli, is it better to be loved than feared? Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of my favorite book. (laughs) But the the key thing is, you know, as long as you are not deliberately being an asshole, and some of you know that you are, then... Bloop, bloop. Then there are ways of ensuring that what you are directing, what you're leading, how you're managing is about the work and the project and not about your ego. Because people can tell when it's about your ego. People can tell when you are trying to be all up in their business. Or <laughs> we, can preach, tell, okay? yes. we can tell. We can tell. <laughs> or you know, generally trying to self-aggrandize. But that is not the same as people aren't going to resent that you are in a position of power over them. That's just one of the things that comes with the territory. You can be the best version of that person. But as soon as you are put into a management role, you will have a different relationship with people. It's unavoidable. You be knowing, Stacey, you be knowing. Yes. <laughs> All right. The question is, I have recently been asked to give feedback about a mentor. How honest should I be? Context, he is getting paid and did a pretty poor job. Why are you paying a mentor? <laughs> oh, snap. Think about that. I don't know who's paying your mentor, but... The goal of mentorship is to help you get better at something, right? Whether it's your current job, whether it's a project that you're working on, whether you are being put into a more senior position, you need some guidance on that. And if this person is not performing, this is very similar to giving anybody feedback. Like what is, don't be vindictive, right? It's important to be constructive. And if you can't be constructive, don't give any feedback. But in terms of this is a mentor, this is somebody who is like clearly being remunerated to look out for you, then what I would say is try to approach this as it would have been really helpful if, as opposed to you were terrible because. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, Stacy! <laughs> <laughs> Please write up. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, what is your top tip for getting a job you are not 100% qualified for? Okay. <laughs> Let me take a note. (laughs) Nobody in the history of the world has ever been 100% qualified for a job, right? If you look at the slates of presidential candidates. (laughs) Go off, Stacey, go off. One of those people is going to be running America. And nobody is like, yeah, that's... And every one of those people would be totally fine. And so... Nobody is 100% qualified for any job. What you have to sell, like every job description is just a set of problems that a company is trying to solve. And all they want to know is that you can solve as many of those problems as possible. And if you present as someone, if you say, and this is, you know, I don't usually quote lean in, but (laughs) (laughs) lots of reasons. There's that whole thing about women tend to self-select out of roles that they don't feel overwhelmingly qualified for and like totally average dude is like, yes, I have this. <laughs> and I see that a lot in job, in job applications where totally average dude is like, I am the best person you've ever hired for this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then incredibly overqualified women are just like, I don't think I should even apply. I'm like, oh my God, please help me. And <laughs> so your responsibility is to demonstrate what in that job description you can fulfill and then how you can learn the other stuff that's in there, right? Because when people write job descriptions, all they're trying to do is be like, who is the magical unicorn candidate who will fall from the sky, who can do all of these things for me? And that is incredibly aspirational. And so don't allow yourself to be put off by job requirements. I mean, if you are, if the thing says need to speak French and German and you're like, oh, I only have Portuguese, like perhaps reconsider. (laughs) But, But otherwise, part of this is in how can you sell the skills that you do have that are relevant and how can you demonstrate that if you were put into a situation where there was something you didn't have the experience to do, you could get that very quickly. Word, yeah. Preach, preach, yeah. All right. This is a two-pronged question. 
What do you do when you work in an emotionally toxic environment? How do you go home and find a new job and not cry? All right. Okay. Somebody in here is going through something can tonight. Can I get an amen for the one time? <laughs> Who here does not work in an emotionally toxic environment? At least sometimes. Okay, so like four <laughs> people raised your hands. <laughs> like, well done, all of you. Hold on to your jobs. Yes. <laughs> and then, so this is the thing, right? An emotionally toxic environment really depends on what your definitions of being miserable are. Some people have higher tolerances than others. <laughs> but the key thing here is like there are very few workplaces in which you go into work every day and it's all like rainbows and fairies and butterflies. But if you are in a situation where you're being abused, if you're being harassed, I'm not going to tell you to go to HR because sometimes you don't even have an HR department where you work. Girl. And the other thing that's really important is HR is there to protect your company and not to protect you. Mm. That's always something to remember. Ooh. Ooh. And so what I would say is like, if you were in a situation where you were going home and crying, cry while working for, looking for a new job. Mm. <laughs> that is all I can tell you. Poetry. <laughs> Poetry. Yo, Stacy, that is all we have time for. All right. But thank you for changing all of our yes. lives. Yes, We're gonna hear a little more from Jean Grey. Yes. I believe she has a Kwanzaa song for us. All right. I do, uh, because we all know how important Kwanzaa is to all of us in our lives, um, how much it has meant just over the years. Um, so if you guys would please just stand up so we can all enjoy uh, this Kwanzaa song together. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but um, actually one of the first principles introduced into Kwanzaa uh, was music, which is sharing, and all us, all of us sharing together. Um, and so the uh, Kwanzaa Council sat down. Um, <laughs> council also spelled with a K, uh, <laughs> and 84 A's for no reason. Um, and they decided. I know you guys. Maybe some of you know this. Uh, the official music of Kwanzaa. If anyone knows, just yell it out right now. Anyone? You came, to, you came to a Kwanzaa Spectacular, I'm just... Okay, well, it's Bossa Nova. So uh, please enjoy with me the uh, official song of Kwanzaa. <sighs> Might wanna turn that up a bit. Let's jam this out. Come on. Kwanzaa was invented in 1966. That's like a long time ago. That's all the information we have. And it's based on a situation where you pronounce things in Swahili and everybody gives each other gifts for eight days or seven or whatever. That's right, it's Kwanzaa. It's East African, for some reason they chose to exclude the rest of us. I'm not saying I'm angry, I'm from South Africa. I've never heard the word Kwanzaa before. Mama Africa, Mama Africa! Kwanzaa, we won't be held down by your oppressors. By a white Christmas! <laughs> By a Frosty the Snowman! We won't be held down. We will rise! We will rise! You guys are already up, so that's not. <laughs> Maybe a cake or something. We'll, we'll still rise. Well, have a merry Kwanzaa. Just snap. Snap like you're at 
a poetry meeting. We'll have red velvet cake and lots of candles and try not to burn the house down because everybody removed their smoke detectors. All right, come on. Just sing. Quanta. Quanta. Oh, just word out. Quanta. Merry Quanta. Or happy Quanta. I don't know. Have a fucking Quanta. Where do the A's go? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nothing's good. Without a Kwanzaa flute solo. Hey guys, it's us from The Stood, and we will get you right back to the Kwanzaa Spectacular in and just a moment. And all of Jean Grey's amazingness. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but first, we got to pay some bills. So here's a word from our sponsor. Support for another round comes from Squarespace. Start building your own website today at squarespace.com. You know who could have used a fucking Squarespace site? Who needs some Squarespace in their life? Y'all, the official Kwanzaa website Listen, is trash. We want it's so horrible. much better <laughs> yes. for Kwanzaa. Like, this is the website that's going to teach everybody about Kwanzaa, and it looks the way it probably did in 1996. Accurate, accurate. GeoCities, four days. The it's ancestors got, like, are looking down like, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> they actually, first, they're probably like, what's the internet? Then they're like, oh, this is what you do with internet? Really? <laughs> Y'all couldn't look into Squarespace? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so oh my god I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> embody Kwanzaa be Kwanzaa respect Kwanzaa do not follow Kwanzaa's lead on the website tip so person who owns the domain for the official Kwanzaa website <laughs> <laughs> Consider Squarespace. Consider it. <laughs> With Squarespace, sites look professionally designed regardless of your skill level and there's absolutely no coding required. What? The site is intuitive. The tools are easy to use. We could really just upgrade it very easily, y'all. <laughs> and if you sign up for a year, you get a completely free domain. Come mm. on. Come on. Right. <laughs> Start your free trial today at squarespace.com. When you sign up, make sure to use offer code another round to get 10% off your first purchase. So Kwanzaa domain holder, there's a discount in it for you. <laughs> Squarespace. Build it beautiful. And now, without further ado, we return you to the Kwanzaa Spectacular and a super special celebrity guest. Up next, uh, we have the interview you all have been waiting for. I hope you guys are as drunk as I am because that is the only way this is going to work. Um, this person does not need an introduction, but I will provide one for you. He is a comedian, an actor, a family feud host, best-selling author of Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, radio personality, and host of his very own talk show. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Steve Harvey. Everybody, welcome to Family Feud. I'm your host, Steve Harvey. Wait, wait, wait. Let's Steve, get no, no, started. No. This, is, to my this is another round. You're not, you're not on Family Feud. Say what now? Do they let you leave the set? No, I live, my whole family lives there. <laughs> okay, well, I'm hosting this show. They let women host the show? They do let women host shows now, yes. What? Uh... Steve, I gotta say, this is the least amount of buttons I've ever seen you in. <laughs> you like this suit? You like this suit, player? It's a situation, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this, for this the people at is... home, can you please describe your beautiful ensemble? I would love to, little lady. So this suit is from my latest line, which you can find at Sears and in some Costco's. Uh, this particular suit is called Old Man in the Club. Because when you in the club and you ain't got no business being there, you need to look fresh, okay? Fewer buttons, still way too much fabric. 
you look a little different. You look like you've had some work done. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you mean. <clears throat> all right, we like to start all our interviews. What do you do and why? All right, we asked seventy-five otters <laughs> if you had potato salad, in what order would you eat it? <laughs> Survey set. Wait, the... we're we're still on my show. I don't know. If... These cards say Family Feud. Am I? Am I? Am I tripping? Okay. So you okay. write a lot about dating and relationships. Do I you do. have any I advice do. for women trying online dating right now or trying to figure it out in the in the online space? Yes, yes. Well, I I believe. I'm sorry. What was that? I just got my mustache done. So we should have totally rehearsed with the mustache. But I don't rehearse, sweetheart. This is I'm a professional. This is a lie. So, funny you should ask about my advice to womans because <laughs> I have just written another book. Uh-huh. It is called Woman Don't. That's the end of the sentence. That's all. It's That's just it? a list of things that womans don't need to do. So, what should women don't? Oh my gosh. <laughs> they just so much. For instance, eat soup. I'm sorry. Because, see, here's the thing. Because when you eat soup, you got to, you got to make the slurping sound, you know, and you got to... That's going to make the men think that you like slurping other things. <laughs> and you're never going to get married that way. And if a woman don't get married, then why is she here? <laughs> why, is she, why is she here? Huh? I'm not sure. I'm just out here trying to learn. All right. <laughs> we asked a hundred shoe cobblers... <laughs> If you had a pet manatee and you had to give it a name, I'm sorry, Tyrone Steve. is the number one answer. I hear Tyrone. you. I hear you. Tyrone. So I'm glad you bring up Family Feud because mm. I'm a big fan and it's clearly oh, your you. best you. work. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Mm -hmm. What are some of the craziest answers you've heard on Family Feud? Oh, man, I love this question here. Okay. So this one time... The category was name. <laughs> what was that, Steve? I'm, I'm sorry. The, cat <laughs> the category was name, name 10 things that women want most in the world. Okay. And this one woman said equal pay. <laughs> Equal pay. That was that's the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. All right, we asked 85 cacti. If you were a mermaid, what would you do? Drink water was the number one answer. <laughs> All right, Steve. You know what? This has been quite an interview. I have an idea. I think you would be great for our. No I'm inhaling my mustache. <laughs> uh, to, is that drink over there for free? Can I? <laughs> this is for you, Steve. Thank you, thank you, darling. Oh, oh, watch out there now. Watch out. So that now. I think you would be great for our next segment, Drunken Debates. Um, Steve, can I you would, stick around for that segment? I would love to host Drunken Debates with Steve Harvey, ladies I'm and still gentlemen. the host. I'm Coming still the out. host. I'm still the host. Uh-huh. I bet you ain't got no man, though. I will have you know I do not. <laughs> but that is none of your business. All right, so... Here with some amazing brand new Drunken Debates theme music is Jean Grey, everyone. Jean Grey. All right, we asked 85 garbage <laughs> men. Steve, no. Still not family if you feud. Still not family feud. Named after you. <laughs> what would it be called? Tyrone was the number one answer again. We're going to let Jean Grey take it away. I can't breathe. Thank you, Steve. 
Your, your hair looks so good today. I just, I just got my scalp done. Yeah, that's... All right. I want to be uh, unnecessarily aggressive. Throw your hands up! It's drunk debates! Throw your hands up! Hey. Why they all looking at me, I can't say. I guess it always looked because I'm fly this way. I forgot I signed up for some drunk debates. Forgot I signed up for some drunk debates. Really should have planned, man, I really should have ate. I might just throw up and end up on fine weight. I guess it's too late, I'll have another five or eight. I'm fired up, I'm trying to die. I'm fired for die for some drunk debates. I'm wired up, I got a mic. It's time to rock. With these drunk debates, throw a hand up for these drunk debates. Throw a hand up for these drunk debates. Everybody in the house with these drunk debates. Everybody in the house with these drunk debates. This is incredible. All right, all right, all right. All right, everyone. We are going to play a few rounds of drunken debates. Everybody, I'm honored to host drunken debates. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm your still host, the host. Steve. I'm still the host. So as the host, I'm going to be the judge because I need to be impartial. Are you the host of all the shows? What year is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me live, Steve. Okay, so nothing says the holidays like drunkenly yelling at your friends and loved ones about things that don't matter. So we're going to bring drunken debates to your Kwanzaa traditions. Here to debate Steve Harvey in his most relaxed state... <laughs> is friend of the show, Jasmine Hughes, everyone. I'm Jasmine, so pleased to Jasmine. see that this little gumdrop has a mustache from my mustache line on her forehead. <laughs> it, it, you look good, you look good. I just good, want to do a quick check in, Jasmine. How drunk are you? I didn't have this mustache when I got here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're great, let's go. Let's I think this is gonna be a great debate, everyone. Okay. Everyone, choose a topic. We all know the rules of drunken debates, but if, in case you are unfamiliar, the rules are very simple. Everyone has to choose a topic. You get two minutes, and in those two minutes, you must argue for your topic. Yeah. That is it. Evan, you crazy. Okay. What do you have, Jasmine? Get comfortable, girl. What do you I got? Have, what do you got? Um, I have hot dogs. All right, Steve, what you got? What you got? Uh, I have received carpooling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Eleanor, Thank two you, seconds Mom. on the... Two seconds. <laughs> two minutes on the clock, please. <laughs> this will be interesting. <laughs> you know, since I am a man, I'm going to let this little sun, ray of sunshine flower go first. <laughs> All right, Jasmine. My balls are bigger than yours, Oh, Steve. my God. Let's calm down, everyone. Let's save it for the debate. Save it for the debate. All right, wow, Jasmine. No hole in my pants. Two minutes are about to start. Are okay. you ready? <laughs> this is about to be a hot ass mess, y'all. Let's go. What, Steven? Have you ever been drunk off of some Tecate? And you're walking down the street and you see a 7 Eleven. You're like, hmm, do I want. Heaven would have things at 7 Eleven. Do I want taquitos, Starburst? Taquitos. Do I want hot takis? Or do I want an old hot dog that's been under a heat lamp for six months? What sounds best to you in that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I listen, I don't know what this woman is talking about, but I would tell you that when you when you young, when you growing up, uh-huh, you got children to your own. And they got to get to the practices. <laughs> sure, sure. How you gonna get them now? How you gonna get them to the practices? You can't ride a hot dog to soccer practice. <laughs> but you can take a carpool. Everybody buy my book. I'm Steve Harvey. <laughs> a rebuttal, Jasmine. <laughs> the, 
carpool lane is about sharing, and it's about <laughs> being environmentally... Oh, my God, you're so drunk. <laughs> Just put for words together, oh Jasmine. God. Put words together. <laughs> I, you don't have to share a hot dog, is what you're saying. You have to share a car for car okay. Okay. But you never share this a hot dog. So you don't have to share a hot dog. Okay, but as as a man, it is my job to share all of my provisions. Steve, don't you have a hot dog with in your my pants? Wom- <laughs> don't you got a carpool in yours? Arguments were what made. Steve Harvey? <laughs> I really don't know how to make a judgment in this case, but Steve. I do think Steve won that one. He won that one. I'm going to declare the winner. Jasmine, you lost to Steve Harvey. <laughs> Jasmine Hughes, everyone. So up next to debate Steve Harvey... All right, everybody, we asked a thousand wildebeest if you could ski, what slope would you frequent? What's the answer, Steve? Tyrone was the number one answer. All right, up next for the last round of drunken debates, because no one needs more of this, is friend of the show, and BuzzFeed video star, Ashley Perez. I was only told that I needed Heaven and and Steve were like, do you want to get drunk? And I was like, yes. And then I didn't realize there was a show portion. (laughs) So I'm here and Let's do a check-in, Ashley. Uh, Nobody told me my scalp was coming off. Ashley, on a level of one to ten, how drunk are you? As Quinta Brunson would say, I'm fucking lit, (laughs) y'all. Oh, fuck. All right. What you got, Ashley? I got fucking escalators. (laughs) Also, I watched, I listened, and I watched and listened to y'all's show. Uh Uh-huh. And I heard Tracy slash Steve go, it took me a long time to get that noise right. It took at least like four months of me I walking apologize. around the office going like, Yes! What was that? What do you what you got, Steve? We gotta begin this debate. <laughs> or I do have we? received winter coats. <laughs> winter coats versus escalators. You have two minutes. You just have to make we sure just you get go your ham? points in. The two they minutes. They try to kill each other for two minutes straight. Do you want to do this just direct eye contact the you whole time? You think I'm scared of you because you a woman? <laughs> Listen, this vagina is gay, but it still works. <laughs> it can still birth shit if it would like. All right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Steve in. We have two minutes on the clock. Who wants to begin? Me. All right, Ashley. Take it away. Listen. You guys fucking live in New York City. Your feet are tired. Your feet are tired taking your bodies. You're fighting every day against the patriarchy. Your feet are carrying themselves onto success. And you know what? You get to the mall and you're just like, you know what? I want to buy this fucking J. Crew sweater and I want to take a fucking escalator. I would like my feet to be carried up to 40% off. <laughs> Because I, I had to deal with bullshit all day long from bald men with mustaches <laughs> who think they know shit about shit. And I just want a cashmere sweater because mama needs a cashmere sweater. And I'm not about right. to walk up one more goddamn stair and I will be escalated to victory. What now, Steve? What now, Steve? Uh. <laughs> Well, first of all, I can tell you ain't got no man because you got too much mouth on you. 
All right. You right, you right, you right. Second of all, as a man, I, I glory. <laughs> what? <laughs> amen, amen. I glory in walking up a flight of steps, see, because I'm a man. And that's you know what why? Because men do. die faster than women and they need to walk up steps so they don't die as fast. <laughs> oh, that's science, Steve. There's 51 seconds on the clock, y'all. You are a very rude little girl. <laughs> You need a winner. I'm cold. acting like a woman, but thinking like a man. <laughs> Steve, any thoughts? Any words? You ain't never gonna get married. <laughs> you ain't never gonna get married. <laughs> Buy a winter coat. <laughs> I said coat. Yeah, I haven't heard an argument for but the winter coat. If you don't wear a coat in the winter time, you gonna get cold. And then you lie, but to die. Uh -huh. If you dead, you can't ride no escalator. <laughs> but if you're dead, we oh. are. Like... Well, I would like to drop this. Mic, I but think it's the honestly. winner is clear, <laughs> without a doubt. This is this is was, was rigged against the men's. <laughs> Ashley Perez is the winner, everyone. <laughs> I've never been this drunk and had this much noise pointed at me. So as the winner, you get the Kwanzaa cake. Oh, oh, oh. Ashley Perez and Steve Harvey, everyone. I'm gonna get out of here. Y'all watch the fan of you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Jean Grey. I know I asked you to stand up for the last uh, song we did when I was here, but for this one, I just want you guys to kind of relax and lean back in your seats. Uh, possibly even close your eyes a little bit. And um, we'll get into the most relaxing song of all time. Are you guys feeling good about Kwanzaa? Un Kwanzaa. Cheer. And may all your liquor's malt A cognac-flavored beer Snowflakes in the air Are fucking up your hair Water's like some kryptonite But white people, they don't care Make a Kwanzaa cake That no one ever ate Candle shaped like giant dicks Bet Sandra Lee had eight Man, Kwanzaa time is here Blackness and some cheer Get your Kooji chocolates from your Kooji chocolatier. Kwanzaa, yeah. A snap would be nice. Help the white people out. All right. Yeah. What day? Does it start on? We're still not sure. We've been here for like two hours. We've learned nothing, nothing. Keep drinking. Hey, eat a patty pie. Get holiday sex in your eye. Or most of all, be thankful for your dollar store nearby. Quanta time is here. Red, black, and green dashi cares. Oh, that we always be co-op 
accepted by our peers. Thank you. Hi, guys. What up? I was in the back because I ate some Kwanzaa cake earlier. And I you had know, issue. Tracy, I think you missed a very special what I, guest. What did I miss? What did I miss? I finally get all the mm. Hamilton references. Virginia, my home sweet home. But I'm so sorry for people who don't because I understand that struggle. Listen, Robert, y'all, y'all are obnoxious. We are. Y'all are obnoxious. Yeah, and now we you are it. too. Ha <laughs> ha. We get it. You've seen Hamilton. <laughs> so it's time for rounds, guys. Yay! This is going by so fast. I can't believe it's almost over. Who are you buying around for, Tracy? Okay. She's getting a drink. I'm getting I'm getting a, getting a little sip. I can't believe you missed our special guest. Who was the guest? What literally what did I miss? Steve Harvey. What? I don't know if you saw him in the back. I have he not was seen great. him. If I saw him, I would have kicked him in the balls. Punt. All right, Tracy, who are you buying around for? I am buying around for, speaking of punting. Oh, my God. There's a link. I'm buying around for Charlie Brown. No. I am, too. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let you live. Kevin, don't do this. It's the holiday season. I'm going to let you say you're around. So I like Kevin, right? We cool. We hang out. It's chill. But sometimes she says stuff like, I don't like Charlie Brown. That just fucks me up. And that's why I'm buying around for Charlie Brown. You know why? Because nobody in Peanuts liked Charlie Brown. And what did he do for anybody? What did he do to anybody? Nothing. Charlie Brown Christmas special. He's like, yo, I know I'm only six, but I'm depressed as fuck. Let me go see a psychiatrist. First of all, Lucy was not licensed, okay? Malpractice suit four days okay. but he's six what can he do i he's, hear you i hear you he's trying to be happy who among us is not just trying to be happy you know what i fucks with that but ain't no but heaven ain't no but ain't no but so <laughs> back to the charlie brown christmas special charlie brown's like yo clinical depression i'm six i know what it means anyway let me give me some help his malpractice practicing ad psychiatrist lucy who don't know nothing because she's also six. (laughs) It's like, you know what? You need some purpose in your life, Charlie Brown. Be the director of our Christmas play. Charlie Brown's like, what? Nobody's ever asked me anything. (laughs) Even though I'm like, I mean, you know, he had male pattern baldness in six, but that's not his fault, you know? Everybody was friend of Charlie Brown. He was was a very nice boy. Anyway, Charlie Brown's like, yeah, I can, I can, let me do this. Let me be important. Let me be something to somebody. And do you know what those little brats did to him? <laughs> they talked about him from sun up to sun, from can to cane, as people in the South would say. <laughs> talked about him from can to cane. From can, can see in the morning to can I, see I at it, night, I it, if I that's what. Sun up to sun down. Anyway, so like, Charlie Brown's like, ooh, we need a Christmas tree. Let me go out and get a tree. He sees a tree that needs some love, right? He's like... I can love this Christmas tree. <sighs> I wish somebody looked at me and was like, this tree needs some love. And I can love this Christmas tree. So nobody do that no more. Nobody does that. But Charlie Brown did it, okay? And do you know what everybody said? Boy, you really fucked this up, Charlie Brown. <laughs> you ruined everything, Charlie Brown. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Brownest. Listen, Charlie Brown was a good dude. All his homies was trash. But what's good with... <laughs> What is good with Linus, though? What do you mean? They did with not the like the black guy. Oh, that was Franklin. Oh, Franklin. They know, was, it was know. the 50s. Everybody was racist. Then nobody wants to sit next to Franklin. Oh, my God. I Literally, bought... the entire table is over there, and then Franklin's right. on that side. You're right. You're right. I should have bought a brown for Franklin. I'm a tool of the system, because I bought one for the little white boy. Damn. I'm glad we got to the bottom of that. OK. Change of plans. Buying around for Charlie Brown and Franklin. Okay. They were both outcasts, right? You right, you right. One for mental health issues, the other because he was black. Two things can't nobody help. Everybody needs love and acceptance. You are not lying. Shout I'm buying rounds for two six six year olds. All right. <laughs> Give Charlie Brown a chance, Heaven. Who are you buying around for? I am buying around for ice cream cake. Oh, 
so I was recently bequeathed an ice cream cake. Somebody died and left you an ice cream cake? <laughs> not quite. I was at a friend's party and she's not like a, she's, she can't do dairy all crazy. Girl, she black, ain't she? She is black. Black people can't do dairy. I do it anyway. So someone was like, well, I don't want this ice cream cake to go to waste at this party. And I was like, oh my God, my time has come. <laughs> it's my time. So I was like, I will take this ice cream cake and put it to good use. And you have not seen happy faces until you've seen all of your roommates drunk at home. Aww. And you come in and you with have 17 a roommates. full ice cream cake. <laughs> Heaven lives with 23 people. I, ha I have four roommates who I love. And they're all lovely. And they we are. are. Yeah, they're some of them are here. Hey, roommates. Hello. I love you all. Anyways. Yay. So Ooh, ice cream cake. The thing about ice cream cake is like they're usually small. You know what I mean? I don't know that I agree. Like they're, they're usually like, like the Carvel, like small, like. Oh, see, I live, I came from a place where Dairy Queens exist, and Dairy Queen be like 17 pound ice cream cake. All right, excuse me. I'm gonna tell you, just move to the South. Get All I'm saying cake. is your life will be improved if you get like a personal ice cream cake. Mm. It's like in your freezer, you're like, oh, I'm watching The Good Wife. You know what this would pair Shout out to well the good with? Wife. Oh my gosh. A slice of ice cream cake. Yeah. Uh, I'm just catching up on Jane the Virgin. You know what this would pair well with? A slice of ice cream cake. Cake is a beautiful thing. Uh huh. We're not celebrating it enough. Agreed. And if you're like, oh, I, I do things, I watch things, you know what would pair well with I these do things? things? <laughs> Always a slice of ice cream cake. Question, question. Did it have like the layer of little crunchy stuff in the middle? It did. Yes. 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 Uh, that's it. That's my entire round. And put Charlie Brown on your prayer list tonight, y'all. He's still going through it. Pray for He's his hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That brings us to the end of our show, everyone. Ah! Oh, my God. Ah! We have so many people to thank for that incredible, incredible show. Yes. Hey, you remember when everybody gave us a standing ovation? Oh my God! There's a great picture of us like literally hiding behind our, our cue cards, cards because we just didn't know how to <laughs> we receive We didn't know how to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so overwhelming and I we know. really do have a lot of people to thank for making this all happen. Absolutely. Thanks to everybody who came and sold out both shows. All your beautiful faces were uh, so nice to see. So fantastic. Thanks to Jean Grey for being our live musical guest. She did like a thousand songs. Yeah. She made some songs She's... just for the Kwanzaa Spectacular. Yes. She's amazing. Buy everything that she makes. I love it. Subscribe to all of her newsletters. Yes. <laughs> Um, a special shout out to all of our special guests mm -hmm. Stacey Marie Ishmael, Yay. Jean Demby, Jasmine Woo. Hughes, Woo. Ashley Perez. Ah. I love that we have this roving, like, <laughs> correspondence world. I <laughs> know. Be a part of our world, guys. Yes. Of course, we got to give a big shout out to our celebrity guest, Steve Harvey. Everybody look out for his book, Woman Don't. <laughs> It'll be in stores at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd like to give whatever is the opposite of a shout out to the bald cap company that we ordered from. Y'all, it had a black person's face on it. We thought we ordered a black person's scalp. It was like, you know, when babies poop in this green. <laughs> <laughs> like a brownish green. Yes. That, that they was gave us color. lizard skin colored. <laughs> no human is that color. Uh, so opposite of a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> to what they apparently think black people look like. <laughs> As we mentioned, this episode was recorded over two nights, one at the Jerome L. Green Space and the other at the Bell House. So a huge thank you to the staff at both of those venues and to everyone who made the show sound amazing, including Jennifer Sindro, David McLean, Damon Whittemore, Noriko Okabe, and Jeff O'Neill. Cheers to you all. And thanks to everyone who made the show look amazing, including Chris Ritter of BuzzFeed, who is an artistic genius that none has the world seen before. <laughs> yes, I'll follow her vision anyway. Yes. And thank you to Hal and Tashween, our BuzzFeed buddies who were also on hand to help out. 
And thank you to our photographer for the night, Sylvie Rosikoff, who took beautiful pictures of us and of the audience. Yeah. Oh, my God. They were so nice. Uh, your faces were just the most beautiful ever. You can see the videos and photos all on our Facebook page and BuzzFeed.com slash Another Round. Uh, this includes the Kwanzaa cake video. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the full Green Space performance. Uh, you guys have to see how beautiful yes, it looks. Yes. Go see the magic that everyone made. And then, of course, we could not have done this without the pod squad. Listen, without the pod squad, we are just two drunk women (laughs) yelling in a room together. (laughs) That is it. (laughs) The show is produced by the one and only Eleanor Kagan, Jenna Weiss-Berman, Julia Ferlin, and Meg Kramer. Thank you for existing, and thank you for making the show. Seriously. It was a production. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. Thank you to Optimus Prime. Oh my God. Thank you, Tracy. It was so I had fun. so much fun. I know, me too. This should be like a Kwanzaa tradition every year. So shall it Get be. Get drunk on stage. <laughs> <laughs> These are our Kwanzaa traditions. <laughs> if you guys like the show, rate us on iTunes, tell a friend, introduce them to Kwanzaa. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Another Round. Email us at anotherround at buzzfeed.com. And look out for more live shows in 2016. We'll be posting about it. Maybe we'll do some shows outside of New York. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe. As you wait for updates, please drink some water. Please (laughs) take some meds. Please call your mom. Back up your data. Yes. The new year. New year, new you. You know what I did? Did you back back up 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 my data again? You know why? Because I learned. (laughs) (laughs) Take your own advice, (laughs) y'all. Happy Kwanzaa, everybody. Happy Kwanzaa. Bye. I also have a line of uh, lace front mustaches coming out. <laughs> One thing that a woman should don't is bungee jump. <laughs> because if you not jumping into the arms of God or another man, what is, <laughs> what is you jumping for? What is you jumping for? I'm not sure, I don't know. We asked a hundred shoe cobblers if you could make a peach cobbler. <laughs> What kind of peaches would you use? Steve, this is Regular my- peaches was the number one answer. This is my family feud, Steve. This is my show. Um, we asked 75 inmates, what is your daddy's name? They didn't know it. <laughs> you know what, Steve? I think that's all we have time for. All right, all right. We asked 75 cacti. Oh my God. <laughs> if they could talk to their dead mama, what would they say? <laughs> Can I borrow five dollars was the number one answer. <laughs> Thank you to Optimus Prime. Oh my God. Tracy, you're the best Kwanzaa gift I've ever gotten. Aww.